gentlemen, we're in a 1987 BMW E30. Finally, I know. But yes, it's not an M3, but this is a 325 IS and it has an M20 engine in it. So this made 168 horsepower, 163 foot-pounds of torque, but since this car has over half a million miles on it, who knows what it's making now, but either way, it's still a lot of fun. This belongs to my buddy Campbell, who was kind enough to let me drive this beautiful E30, and it's possibly the cleanest E30 in Atlanta. And if you have a cleaner one, let me know, we'll see. But this car has been through hell and back. It's been pretty much fully restored. The interior is flawless. They decided to go for a two-tone look, and even in the door panels, they went black and tan. It's all the little tiny touches. So even like the side pockets in these, they get really faded and really gross, but they replaced these, so now they look a lot better. Along with the interior, the dash, the steering wheel, everything looks brand new. Even the shifter boot was redone the, with the new paint. They prepped it all by themselves too for paint, for the respray of this car, but hardly anybody wanted to paint it. But then finally somebody decided to paint it because the prep work was that good by amateurs, as they say. But when it comes to the actual drivability of the car, it's on H&R Springs and it feels brand new. This car feels like it came out of the factory and I, I barely have anything to say about it because it's just that clean and it handles so well. And it's quiet. You drive around and it doesn't have drone. It has a brand new muffler on the back, but it drones with a little bit of a hum at the very beginning, but when you're driving around and you get on the highway speed, nothing bothers you. You're just enjoying the E30. Believe it or not, my first ever boosted car I ever drove it wasn't on the channel. I was 16 years old. My friend Will had a boosted E30. It wasn't an M3, but it was a 328. And he was like, hey, you want to drive a turbo car? I was like, of course I want to drive a turbo car. It smelled of oil. It was breaking every single day. The wiring was bad. None of the gauges worked. It was just an absolute mess. But I remember getting behind the car, hitting boost, but also feeling the chassis and everything in hindsight. I got older and realized just how much fun the E30 was. And even though it was a rotting pile of crap, I still miss driving it somehow. the E30 though that it's momentum based. Very much like a Miata kind of vibe. Oh. <laughs> All right, first gear rips in this car. It's awesome. I was not expecting that. The Power Man is extremely linear. You, It's very, very predictable. You know what it's gonna do, but first gear kicks you really hard. So I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a Taurus in front of me that's like, attempting to stand out and he just blew a vape cloud. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, here we go. Just goes and goes and goes. Sounds good. The E30 is a car that has skyrocketed in value, especially the M3 version. But that makes people overlook all the other versions and then they don't even bother. But even this version is a ton of fun. Redline is 6,500 RPM, so right before 7,000. And look, I am having a full conversation with you as I do this in a 20 something year old car. Brakes, you just barely get into it and they start biting. Nothing wrong with that, they are disc not drums, which is really nice. They're small discs, but they work. The motor in this, when you idle at first to warm up, it just kind of goes up and down, but once you get it warmed up, it's perfect. Nothing's really wrong with it. The gauges, only the Speedo doesn't work, but hey, who cares, right? The tack works, that's all you need. And a car that's made for drivers, that's all you need anyway. The gas gauge has a little bit of an issue. Basically, when it's empty, it's half a tank, so you just kind of manage you figure it out best thing about the e30 is probably just the driving position it's super super planted and along with that it's like a glass bubble before all the safety inspections came along 
you know, you had such good visibility in cars because the A pillars, the B pillars, everything was minimal. And this, with being a coupe, it's a two-door, so it's even better that way. It drives so incredibly smooth, I can barely believe it. This fourth gear is reeling it out. I could have like a cup of tea and talk to you while doing this. It's amazing. One thing I did notice is the steering, and the steering, believe it or not, the rack is out of a brand new Z4. It was cheaper to get one out of a Z4, brand spanking new, than getting a refurbished one, which blows my mind. But that's what happens when you have an old car. Having an old car can be tricky sometimes, and getting parts for an old car can be kind of a pain. It blows my mind because the last BMW I did was a BMW 2002 that was like, ratted out and just he just didn't care about anything in that thing but he had the same engine as this so it's really intriguing seeing like a ratty car with that engine that didn't have a gas pedal going to a fully restored BMW with the same engine and feeling the chassis difference feeling the advancements that BMW did with the engineering I always said that the 2002 felt like a granddaddy to the E30 and I still stand by that it just is 100%. They improved every single thing inside this car. The seats in this are also fully restored. He originally found this car as a pile of crap. And this one of the seats had duct tape on it. That's all I gotta tell you. It was that bad. They did everything in this interior. The seats are so comfortable now too. They don't really grab you that well, but they're so comfortable to the point that you just don't really care. Even in fifth gear, this motor has power. I mean, it made only 168 horsepower, but it's a perky, perky 168 horsepower. So another thing are these wheels, which I absolutely love. They aren't the original wheels because the original wheels were like really tiny and they're really expensive. If you were to get like BBS reps, they'd be like $3,000, like $3,000. Like, no, I'm not about that life. But he got these really nice reps, they work, and they match this car's character very well. It looks original, and it looks like they could have come with this car, especially with the BMW center caps. That really set it off. It's amazing what little things do to help restore a car. One of the first things he did was change the faded badges, and that alone pretty much could trigger the entire restoration of a car, because you're like, well, I made this nice, I guess that means I need to make this nice, and then it's just a domino effect. One thing I've noticed about BMWs is, is that their shifters feel very rubbery. Like, it's a really odd feeling. This is even true in the new ones. Like, the 335i I reviewed about two, three years ago, I noticed his shift linkage was like super long and very kind of squishy. I know that's a weird term to say, but it felt like it had a lot of play in it. This feels like it doesn't have as much play in it, but BMWs have always had that very soft shift. I'm just one of those people, I guess, that really likes a really notchy shifter, like a bolt action rifle, but I've just always noticed that. The steering wheel in the E30 is deceivingly big as well, which I kind of like because it gives you a little bit more leverage. But when you're outside of the car, it looks like a small racing wheel, but then you sit down. And then another thing too is when you go around a corner, you can accidentally like hit the horn. <laughs> so you can be going around a corner, you know, in like race, race car drive mode and this accidentally go like that. <laughs> so one other thing is the Bridgestones on this car, they're 205s, and with the really hard sidewall, it really translates to the driver. You feel every single divot in the road, which necessarily is not a bad thing. This car had to feel so advanced compared to other markets, like the American market and the Japanese market. This car had to have felt more expensive and nicer and handled better. And it blows me away that this came out the same time as some other cars. Because it's still pretty timeless. I mean, the looks of the car are very timeless. It's still a little 80s, you know, it has the boxiness, but I love it. The E30 has a charm to it that a lot of cars don't have. So, one of my favorite things about this car is that it is driven every single day. You can't help but respect that. You know, he said, I've done everything on this car except the engine but here's the thing about the engine it works and it's still working and that's something you can't really complain about as a complete package you can't really go wrong with this car it handles great has a great racing history with the e30 it looks fantastic 
it always will stir up a conversation in the car world and it's timeless. What more do you need? All right, guys, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching this quick little video review. I had a fantastic time driving this E30. It was great getting to drive one that was done right and not ratty and forgotten about. So with that, I feel extremely privileged. I will see you guys next time. Take it easy. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next time. Take it easy. Bye.